What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Minecraft with me, your boy Iggy. Today, we got a lot planned. Uh, I figured at some point we would get this thing torn down since we no longer need it, seeing as how we've got all of our bees, all of our bee farms, our honeycomb and our honey, wait, no, honey bottle and honeycomb farms are all set and chugging right along. As you can see here, we've got a good amount of honeycomb already. That'll be great for the uh, honeycomb blocks and for candles since we've got our spider spawner over yonder. And then uh, we've got honey bottles and you can see we've already got 12 honey blocks. These are going to be great for me in the meantime because we do not have slime blocks yet. So I have yet to find a slime chunk or see any slimes. The only slime I've gotten was like five balls from a wandering trader. So unfortunately you can't use honey to make sticky pistons, but... You can use it to do some of the other uh, redstone-y stuff that requires you to have blocks that stick. So it's kind of like a slime alternative that doesn't stick to slime. So that may come in handy. I just figured it'd be good to have. You can already see we're getting some more bottles coming along here. So that's great. Coming down and checking on our pumpkin and melon farms. Keep in mind I've already taken a decent amount of out, a decent amount out of this to go and uh, trade with the villagers because this is probably one of the best one of the best farms to trade ratios but i figured we would start off today by trying to uh maybe make this work a little bit better we've got you know the pointed dripstone and it's dripping because these are all waterlogged above so i'm not sure why these are not i know i've been saying it for episodes now but i'm still not sure why these are not um producing i'm wondering if underneath these bottom ones needs to be water sources as well for the ones at the bottom to grow so we're just gonna try that and i mean i guess that's a big part of minecraft is uh just kind of trial and error until you figure out what your what your issue is especially on new features like this i couldn't find anything that would explain why my um dripstone was not growing here i mean someplace it just said that the tick speed versus the percentage of it actually growing is super low but I don't know. I mean, Cub Fan on uh, Hermitcraft has gotten like tons of the stuff so far. So I don't know what he's doing differently with his farm or if he just is playing way more time or this, it's running like or rendered in way more than mine is because it's just a single player world. But either way, I figured what we would do here is I would appear to have already done this wrong. So we're going to have to put these one block further down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to get some water sources and where this deep slate block is right now. So it's going to have to move down to that block and then there'll be a water source and then there'll be the dripstone above it. Hopefully that can speed up the process of getting some of the uh, stalagmites. I don't know if you need to have like one down on the ground for it to actually uh, grow above, but... I guess I'm just going to keep trying different things and hopefully at some point we uh, get some dripstone here and then we can get some renewable lava and all that other fun stuff. So I'll be right back with you just a sec. Let me get this put in and then uh, we'll come back, take a look and it'll look the same as when we originally started, but maybe it'll work better. I don't know. We'll find out. All right. So I got my channel dug out here and uh, basically it's just the deep slate uh, tiles at the bottom and then along the sides. I like to... Uh, if whenever there's going to be like water or redstone, I always put a block down that I know is man placed as opposed to naturally generated. So that way I don't accidentally dig through it. If I uh, happen to be underneath, you know, maybe making a basement for this thing or whatever the case may be. Uh, that way you just kind of know that there is something there and not to mess with it. So now what we're basically just going to do is I've got my uh, infinite water source over here. Before we do that, we are going to take a little nappy nap. And then I'm going to go along the uh, perimeter right there and just make those all water sources and then put the dripstone back above it. So let's see. So it will be that one. And then we've got an infinite water source and we can just go every other block like so. And that will create a water source in between the two. We'll put one in the corner, put one right there, grab that one again. And then you can see where it slants down. You put one on the next one. That'll become a water source. And you just take it from every other every other block here. And just kind of make your way along. It's pretty basic stuff. 
Alrighty, and with that we are done. Now we can get our dripstone blocks back and just go ahead and put these in here like so. Oh, that was my little step down. And I really need to come in here and do something about like the floor. Maybe I'll do that like in between episodes because it's not really going to be that entertaining to watch. Just do some sort of cool floor design. We need to need to do something about our little up and down drops here for the mob farm which i guess we'll take a look has been chugging along just great we've got all kinds of drops coming in we've got our gunpowder almost a full i would say with that we probably have a full double chest so that's good and then uh lots of bones lots of rotten flesh lots of arrows and a bunch of random miscellaneous stuff that appears to be actually i guess we can leave the chicken and the feathers because those are probably from the uh uh, chicken jockeys that spawn and just happen to fall to their demise. Uh, one thing we do need to put in today, though, is a uh, overflow protection system. So I need to hope... Oh, I hear a witch. Let's see if we can get her. Oh, there she is. She not... Oh, witches don't take fire damage. Are you still there? Yes, you are. Come here. Come here, you. No, this is not going to work. She's dead? Hmm. I'm hearing... S Interesting. Let's check this last one. Oh, we got some sugar from the witch. Alright, so I guess it does kind of do... something. But... Yeah, the other project I had in mind for today, now that we got the uh, dripstone sorted out, we'll go and pop in here real quick and do the uh, uh, item disposal system for that. And then somewhere over here, once... Oh, I, you know, I should not have slept that last night because I really needed to get the bees. I put in another hive. Hopefully that's enough. If not, we'll grab one more and get all them so we can take this down. But I was thinking somewhere back here, maybe... Maybe alongside, you know, this building, so we'll kind of terraform this down right here a little bit. And then, um... Oh, I still got some moss I gotta mine out. But yeah, no, we'll terraform this down a little bit. We'll have a little pathway that kind of goes back in between, you know, these buildings right here. And then to the right here, I was thinking we would get ourselves our, uh... Our auto smelter put in. So, actually, I'm going to cut real quick. We're going to hop over to my old world, and I'm going to show you the smelter that I had there. I'm probably not going to replicate it in this one because it was kind of a redstone, like, nightmare. But I'm going to take a brief cut here. I'll join you back up in my other world. We'll have a look, and then uh, we'll decide if maybe that's sort of the design that we want to go with or if we want to go with something a little bit more simple for, uh, for this world because, I mean, they do basically the same, the same thing. Okay, so here we are in my personal world, and it may be slightly choppy just because of how much we got going on here and all the data packs and shaders. You can see I've got the vanilla PBR actually working in this world. I wonder if it'll work in the new one because it gives like the bricks the kind of the cool textures, same with the wood, and I really like playing playing like that and even like the uh, cobblestone and the gravel kind of have a little bit of a texture to them but hopping right over here to my super smelter building I believe this was a design by Il Mango and it uh I'm not sure why that's there but okay but basically it's a design by Il Mango and you've got all your furnaces going down in one big line I want to say there's 32 here but then behind it it's not just like your average like auto smelter it's very redstoney and the way that it works is it uh what's it called so basically when you load up your items to be smelted and your fuel it perfectly evenly distributes all of the fuel and all of the items at the exact same time so like i don't really uh, do I have anything here that I can smelt? I think it's got a bunch of bamboo. Um, yeah, you get the idea. So every single furnace turns on at exactly the same time. Um, they all get only the fuel that they actually need to... Uh, what's it called? 
do the stuff or smelt the items but just the amount of blocks and the redstone and the complication i think i'm actually just going to probably end up going with a uh a minecart system this time around i know in uh wells knight's new episode of hermitcraft or newest at the time of recording this which i believe was episode uh eight uh, he did a super smelter, so I'm probably going to replicate the design because it's a pretty basic design, but I always like visiting this world. Like I said in the uh, last video, I know, see, the thing is I'm recording these ahead of when they're actually coming out. So, like I said, definitely let me know in the comments if this is a world that you'd like to see maybe a second side series of me uh, building in because, you know, I've already got quite a bit of things established in this world and i think it would be a lot of fun to maybe try some new stuff with the uh the 1.17 stuff but i'm gonna hop back hop back to the uh, other world and uh we'll get started on some more projects for today okay so we are back down here in the mob farm and i just figured real quick we would set up a uh, automatic dropper for the overflow for the um uh mob farm here so basically we've got our dropper and i'm gonna have to turn down the mob sounds in post but Got a dropper with a comparator coming out of the dropper. Next, we're going to get a sticky piston and place it like that. And then if I, mm, it's not gonna be room here. Let's see. Actually, get rid of these. So then we're going to need a, let's see. Uh, we can need a dispense or an observer looking into the sticky piston here. So let's see, we are going to go one, two, and then let's see. An observer looking into that block. Get rid of these. Uh, let's see if I can fit here, and then we'll do an observer going right there. So now when an item goes into the dropper, it automatically will spit it out. So now what we can do is we are going to go ahead and remove our scaffolding from right here so we can just kind of relocate this over a little bit. That, and you know, we'll have it come up right here. Perfect. All right, we can pop these out and we can pop these out. Open up a little bit back here. All right, and this way we can put a cauldron right there. And then we're actually gonna have to go back one more. And do I have a lantern on me? I do not. I have a torch, so I'm just going to chuck a torch, boom, right there. And then for the cauldron, um, hmm, what I think we're actually going to have to do is open this up a little bit more as well. Like so. I guess we can get rid of that and that. Do that, all right, and then this way we can encase our dropper. I don't have any glass, we're just gonna use stone, like so. And then I'm gonna have to come in with a uh, lava bucket, but I mean, for now, it'll just get shot out and land in the thing and despawn. But yeah, that works. So that's basically how you do a uh, automatic dropper unloader just comparator sticky piston below it observer facing that way and then this way when that gets triggered it pushes the observer up and just creates a infinite little wheel right there so i'm gonna go grab a lava bucket get this filled and then we will get started on the next bit of today's episode um not really sure what project i'm gonna do next i got my list here we've got our item overflow so it looks like we're gonna be moving on to the auto smelter here so stay tuned for that Alrighty, so I am back here, uh, kind of flattened out the area and then measured out a 47 by 15 box, which is going to go right here. And then I'm going to be digging that uh, six deep 
and that is where our super smelter is going to go so i'm just going to keep on digging this out and once i've got a big hole we'll join back up and we will start getting this thing in okay so i was in the middle of my digging and i heard this guy show up and he actually has something that i've been waiting for for some time so we're going to grab our emeralds and if we just come on down here we have drip leaf finally so now we just need the uh glow berries and we'll have all this fun stuff i'm just gonna chuck that back in the ender chest with my monies and uh get back to digging my hole but this is great i'm super stoked on that i've been waiting for this dude to have that for well pretty much since i started the world and actually had emeralds from the villagers to uh spend on it so Here's what we've got so far. I've just been manually digging. Um, there's one thing that this has made me realize that we need to get the other two wither skulls so that we can go and get a beacon because this is just monotonous. And I actually ended up am going to be doing it 49 by 17 by 9 deep so that way I can have a roof and then put a floor in this thing and still have seven in between. And then... It'll have uh, stone brick walls, and it'll still be 47 by, by 15 once it's all said and done. So I'm going to get back to this, and uh, once the hole's done and I've got the little walls in, we'll join back up, and we'll uh, get started on the actual smelter. Alrighty, so I had to take a quick break from digging the hole. Got the hole actually dug out. Just don't have a floor in it yet, but my tools are hurting. So I figured I would come over here to my villager trading hall went and grabbed some uh, melons and pumpkins from the farms we built the other day and basically uh, my personal fastest way to get experience and repair tools is just using the uh, villager trades because if you've got farmer villagers you only have to cure them one time to get the one emerald pumpkin and one emerald for one melon trades which is very very handy it's like and then you can just kind of i mean this guy wants a little bit more but we got plenty so that's no big deal are you guys gonna refresh your trades or all right well while they're doing that then i like to come across over here and just stock up on some glass because it never hurts to have have glass i don't think any of these guys have it you should have some Perfect. And my shovel's just about repaired, so now we can go ahead and swap it out for the pick. Alright, well, I'm gonna have to wait for these guys to uh, refresh their trades, but as you can see, just barely any trading got the shovel, like, basically brand new. So, I'm gonna finish up uh, doing these guys, and then we'll head back over to the uh, project. Alrighty, so time to get our auto smelter in. So we've got our floors done, we've got our walls done. So you're gonna come over to the side that has 15. So one of the narrower sides, and you're going to come to the center block, which I believe is this one. So we'll double check, but we're gonna come one, two, three forward. On that third block, you're gonna place uh, one of your building blocks and you're gonna go three high. And then we'll double check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, perfect. So then next to your little uh, stand here, what we're going to do is we are going to put a stair on either side like so. And then in front, I'm just going to go ahead and put my crafting table. And we're going to need two double chests. And this is going to be mirrored on each side. So we're going to go under the stair. We're going to go one, two, and we're going to go one, two. All right, and then next to those stair posts, we're going to come up by two, like so. And we're going to do that on both sides. And then we're going to grab a powered rail and a normal rail. So it's going to go powered rail there, powered rail there, normal rail there, normal rail there. And we're going to come to the sides of our normal rails. And we're going to do one of those. And one of those. And then from the hoppers, we are going to come around the back here to the chest and go one, two, three, four, five. And then from that fifth one, we're going to go one, two, three. Actually, we'll get those lined up here in a minute. So this piece right here is actually going to be three long. And we're going to do that on both sides. Two, three. And then this is where our first furnace is going to go so it's going to go one two so we're going to continue the hopper so three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And then we're gonna come back over and grab our furnaces. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And we're going to come around to the back of our hoppers and into each of those we're going to put a or in each of our furnaces rather we are going to put a hopper like so and this is for the fuel to be dropped off like so and then we're going to come around to the other side and do the same thing so one two three four five and then from the fifth one one two and then on this first one, that's where our first furnace is going to go. So boom, right there. And then we're going to continue this with another 15. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Because we already have the one down there, which counts as one. So we have 16 total. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Same thing, hoppers into those furnaces. Just like so. All right, and then from there, we can actually grab some of our building blocks here and we're gonna come, let's see. I believe it's like so. Yeah, now we're just gonna put those all the way around. I'm actually out of spruce and I need to sleep, so I am going to sleep. Actually, we got a little bit more spruce wood, not a ton, but. You know what? That'll do. Uh, let's see if I can go back around this thing. Wait a sec. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Actually, we'll sleep real quick. I had to think about the design for a second. I mean, I do have it mirrored on the other side already just because I was like getting it in. So now I'm trying to do it from like memory here. But we'll just connect all these up like so, so that they come to the hoppers here. So we should have something like this. We can just go ahead and strip these, make it look nice. Alrighty, and now uh, we're gonna need powered rails and basically, so, we have a power rail here, a regular rail here. Let's strip back here. There, okay. Perfect. All right, so coming out of this top rail, we're going to go power rail. And then we are going to get our hoppers again because we need to put a hopper going down into all of these. These are the loading hoppers to load the things that we will be smelting into the furnace. The ones in the back there are for fuel and the ones on the bottom are to remove the uh, collect all the drops and send them up to the front. And it's a good thing we had built the iron farm, otherwise this would have been presently undoable. So it's a good thing that we've got quite a bit of iron. And I think I just might have enough time to finish this in this episode because it is getting a little bit long. All right, so we've got that. So now we can come over here and continue our powered rail. We're gonna need a regular rail for the corner, boom. And then we're just gonna power rail all the way down here. And then we'll do the same down on, no, that's not what I want. Oh, this is just gonna keep trying to connect, isn't it? Urgh, frustrating. 
All right, well, we'll get back to that step. So I'm placing the uh, ends can be a little bit tricky just because it wants to do one thing and you're trying to get it to do another. So we're actually going to place a regular rail in the corners there. And then all along the back here is going to be powered rails as well. Like so over all the hoppers. So basically all the hoppers are going to have uh, powered rails over them like so. And then the corners are going to have regular rails like so as you can see. So I'm going to uh, craft up some more powered rails real quick so we have enough to actually finish this thing and then uh, we'll show you where to go from there. Okay, so I got our power rails made. Basically now what we're going to have to do is duplicate what we have on this side on this side. So basically there's our center point. It's going to come around. These are going to be where we load our fuel in on either side and then this is where it's going to bounce back. So we're going to do this end first. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our building block and we're going to place it on the end just like that. And as you can see, the one wood has a powered rail that goes into it. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate that over here. And then next to that powered rail, we're going to put a piece of wood like that. Perfect. And then next to this one, whoops, like so, we're going to have that. And then we're going to come up. And do a little leap of faith here and do our power rails right there, right there, which means we can place a block up against that powered rail. And now we've got duplicates on both sides. Perfect. Go ahead and get those stripped up, make them look nice. I think there might be one more in the back. Nope. And then we're going to go back along and just continue our powered rails as before. So basically you want to have this overlapping by one so that it doesn't put two into this last chest and that way it's evenly distributed all the way along, same right here. So we can just continue our power rails all the way along here. And it looks like I might be a little bit short. Yep. Actually, let's see, did I do the other side? I did not do the other side. So we're gonna need quite a few powered rails. And I am running dangerously low on gold. We're gonna have to get a gold farm in here pretty soon. Uh, I will try that many for now. Boom, and you'll see that connects, and then it will go all the way down to the end here, bounce off of that, go all the way back. Fantastic. We'll do the same thing over on this side. So what we'll do here first is go ahead and duplicate what we've got going right here. So as you can see, coming off of the last hopper, we have two. So let's see. One, two. And then we'll double strip strip. And then we'll have... Power, power, which will be just like over here. So as you can see, it's looking the same. And then right here on the end, block, strip. And then let's see right there is going to be a block. We are going to strip. And then I need my scaffolding. We'll come up and we'll place another power rail right there so that on the end of that power rail, we can place another block right there. Boom. And then you're going to grab the lever. That's going to go right there. So you can send your mine cart off. And now we just got to go ahead and finish getting the rails put on this thing. Which shouldn't take too long. I think I might need a couple more. We'll just grab six more. It should be enough. Hopefully. And then we'll just come along and finish putting these down here. Alrighty, and then to power this whole thing, you're going to need to be a little creative with some redstone block placement. So the first one is going to go, so where you've got your center and it comes up, you've got one, two, it's going to go right there. Same on the other side. So one, two, it's going to go right there. Uh, no, wait, right there. Bring that one back. All right, and this one right here is going to go just to the left of that guy. Then we'll go same on the other side. So this first one that is not powered right here, we'll get a redstone next to it. And as you can see, that powers most of this down to here. And then on this first one, that's not powered is where you're going to place that. And that will go all the way and leave that last one unpowered. And that is very key because that is what is going to uh, stop the mine cart so we can refill it. So again, You'll see we'll come down all the way to this last unpowered one, plop it right above that, and it will continue all the way down. But it looks like we made a mistake and did it one too early. We're actually going to place it there. 
pop that one off. And, oh wait, no, it's only supposed to do it on that side. Okay, that, I, I goofed. So yeah, we've got it right across from, wait, am I on this block? Yeah, you know what, we'll just place it on that one and we'll pull this one back. Perfect. Yeah, because I totally forgot that it's supposed to stop on that side and then bounce off of this side. So basically now we just need to get our last couple mine carts here. So let's see. One, two, three, two, three, up, two, three. And then we'll go ahead and put hoppers in those. Like so. And then one is going to go right here. One is going to go right here. And the last one is going to go right there. And it is bedtime. And it looks like I forgot a lever right there. So we'll go throw that up here real quick. And on this side. All right, so now what will happen is if you hit this lever, turn it back on, those will go all the way along and distribute all of your ores or whatever it is that you're smelting into your hoppers, and then they will come back and stop. And then if when you're loading your fuel, you will put it into this cart, hit that, it will go, it'll fill up all those hoppers, it'll go all the way around to the other end here, bounce off, and then come all the way back and return to right here. So we'll just wait for it to come back, make sure it works. Perfect, everything's functioning. We'll double check this side, get that sent along its way. See it pass by the back, see it pass by the back. Bounce off on its way back, perfect. Wait for it to get a little ways, it should stop. It stopped, we'll double check these. They go, they're both going, they both bounce off the back and they come back to the end. And because I left, okay, we got an issue right there. What happened there? What happened here? Why did you stop? Because I forgot a rail. Ah. All right, well, this is why you uh, double check your designs every time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, get that last rail put in. I knew I was gonna be just short. Let's see, one more. And All right, so now everything should be functional. And uh, I think on that note is where we are going to end the episode for today. Uh, probably next episode, we'll get a roof on this thing, maybe start working on the storage building, or maybe we'll go to the nether and uh, do some, some wither skeleton skull hunting. Uh, I've done a little bit off camera, have yet to get have any luck, but you know, maybe we'll do a stream and just uh, look for some wither skeleton skulls. But anyway. Thanks for joining me today. Once again, my name is Iggy. I always appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell button so you're notified every time a new video comes out. Leave a comment down below for me. I love reading your comments. Don't forget to check me out on Twitter and Twitch. Both are at IggyHaxer, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. You have a great day. Bye-bye.